Based on the development of AI has been topic of great interest lately, particularly with Malaysia's ambition to be a generative AI hub. A report by the Malaysia Centre for Fourth Industrial Revolution, Malaysia Centre for IR, presented that generative AI can potentially unlock $130.4 billion in productive capacity in the Malaysian economy. For business owners, particularly small to medium-sized ones, incorporating AI can feel intimidating. Some employees might even have the perception that AI will replace their roles. In actuality, incorporating AI into the everyday workflow can help businesses improve operational efficiency by automating tedious tasks that would otherwise require significant manual input. And this helps free up employees' time so they can focus on productive tasks. And to discuss further on how we can unlock efficiency and productivity for businesses with AI, which is uh, with Kelvin Koch, the founder and CEO of Xreal. Thank you for joining me in studio this morning. Firstly, perhaps you could share how, um, what are some imaging trends that you see in AI right now, especially in Malaysia? Thanks for having me today. So, um, typically for SME today, we have seen a conventional kind of uh, applications such as um, product recommendation, mm -hmm. forecasting. These are the common use cases that has been around in the AI space for SME. With the rise of generative AI, like what you mentioned earlier, this is another area where we start to see uh, businesses start to use generative AI mm -hmm. to generate content, particularly for text and non-text based. Text based could be uh, for uh, marketing purposes. Non-text based could be the images itself, right, for the marketing as well. But then the, the challenge that we see, right, uh, for most of the SME today is still on the data silo problem. What I mean by that is that um, they have lots of different subsystems. This data could be in the all uh, in could be in all different places. Maybe just use a, a restaurant as an example. So restaurant itself, they sell their product like in the store. Obviously, they also sell in other food marketplaces, right? The three major one. So if you use this example, right? Technically, they have four different systems. Okay. One system is their own system where they have full control. There are three others that have no control at all. But then they rely on those uh, platforms, they rely on those systems to uh, do their business. So in this case, what it means is that they are, the data is actually uh, separated in four different silos. But then for most business owners today, obviously they want to um, see their business as one, right? Rather than four different silos. This will be a major challenge where stopping them from using AI itself, right? Because ultimately you need all your data go into somewhere so that you can make use of the AI to help you to automate certain things or achieve certain business outcome. Mm -hmm. But before we go further into the discussion, what are the <coughs> adoption rates of uh, generative AI in Malaysia for a, a small and medium sized business? Yeah, so I think that's an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. So for a more um, advanced SME that is more tech savvy, right? Uh, that is, uh, that they, they will use a, a generative AI, which I think almost everyone use uh, ChatGPT these right. days, right? Mm -hmm. To do certain things. But then um, go beyond just a chatbot, go beyond just uh, generating text itself. The adoption is generatively low, mainly because uh, of the data silo problem is one. Mm -hmm. Second is also obviously the wrong perception about the AI, what AI can do or what is even AI, right? So I think this is a, a major one. When we talk to a lot of customers, mm -hmm. they think AI can do everything, right? Mm -hmm. Just like in the movies. And they thought it's a threat for the business. Yeah, correct. correct. To, to make it worse, it's a threat, right? Mm -hmm. the, the understanding is incorrect in a way. Um, we as a human will not be replaced by AI. But instead, right, we will be replaced by whoever that use AI. It's the other way around, right? Mm -hmm. Because AI is just a tool that enables us to do more with less, right? It is not like replacing us uh, to do everything that we have today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, uh, on adoptions of AI, what are pr practical steps should businesses uh, start to adopt this generative AI in their businesses? Yeah, so I think a uh, short version for that is start small. Mm -hmm. scale and repeat, right? So what, what do I mean by that, right? So lots of use cases that we have seen uh, at the beginning stage, it might look practical. Then when the project start to implement, you will realize that um, either the data quality is not there or make it worse, right? They don't even have the data at all. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe there are external factor that is affecting the result of the model itself. So in this case, it will stop um, um, businesses from getting the initial business outcome during the initial stage. Then the next problem will come is that means you need data, you need quality data. And just like what I mentioned earlier, data silo remain a big problem for lots of organization, not mm -hmm. just SME itself. So without having one places where all your data are securely ingested, processed, this um, AI journey will not be useful, right? Then the third will be the uh, return of investment. Lots of cases we have seen is that the AI can solve a business problem, right? But it doesn't generate high business impact, right? It becomes like an uh, experiment, mm -hmm. right? A science experiment where you have the data, you know what to do, but then it doesn't like, like really solve a business problem. So nobody, especially for SME, right? They are not going to invest lots of money into something that cannot help them to create mm -hmm. a business impact, especially uh, today, right? Uh, things are so competitive. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings to my next question where uh, we have to be a step back. We have to help these business owners understand how can this generative AI actually help to streamline, optimize their businesses? So I think um, mainly come from multiple angle, right? So always start with uh, uh, outcome perspective and then work backward. So this is the typical process when we work with our customers. We start with a business outcome on high level what we are trying to achieve here with the uh, generative AI or with any AI solution. And then from there, we work backward, right, to see whether do we even have this data today. Mm -hmm. And if we have this data today, are they uh, processed? Are they stored somewhere securely? Because ultimately, um, you can have the best idea on earth. You can uh, achieve the business outcome. But if the governance or even the data that you ingested are in somewhere that is not secure, where uh, wrong people can have access to it, that's even worse, right? Yeah. So I think having the outcome or end in mind is super critical in order to have a tangible business outcome. Second, obviously, like just like uh, what I mentioned earlier, is to start small, right? So that you can feel fast, feel safe, uh, without incurring lots of resources of your uh, organization. Mm -hmm. Right, so these are the two key key major items. Mm -hmm. Do you have actually some real world examples for the success stories of uh, generative AI in SMBs? Yeah, so definitely uh, there are plenty, right? So maybe uh, just talk about one that is more customer facing. So I'm sure everyone heard about chatbot. So that's mm -hmm. something that I don't want to talk about. Okay. That is something uh, that is like like too <laughs> too many in the market, mm -hmm. right? With the customer experience here, we are talking about how uh, maybe uh, talk about a FMCG company, how do they like um, be able to know who is their customers? Mm -hmm. You know, conventionally for a typical FMCG company, they need to go through a uh, different channel to sell their products, right? Could be supermarket, could be uh, uh, another channel. So the challenge is always like, who is their customers? How do they reach out to customers so that they can get feedback and improve their product and services? Mm -hmm. So with the uh, rise of generative AI, right, what we have helped our customers is actually to launch a campaign. The campaign is be able to um, allow the consumer who buy their product using WhatsApp just to take a picture of the receipt. Mm. And then the AI will read the receipt and from there will be able to give us certain rewards. Okay. So from this whole process here, uh, in the past, obviously, they can engage agent, agency to run the whole com campaign, which will, which will cost them hundreds of thousands uh, because you need human to read through the receipt, right, mm -hmm. to see whether it fulfilled the uh, campaign requirement. But right now, this part of the process can be automated. Um, of course, with the objective is to um, understand who is your customer, where they buy the product, and when they buy the product. Then from there, they can improve their um, um, targeting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or even improve their products so that they can better fit their customers. Mm -hmm. So this is more uh, customer facing. Mm -hmm. The other one that I have is actually more internal facing and more for the productivity for the employee itself. Particularly for this is on multiple angle. One angle is uh, about automating 
task that is repetitive, automating tasks that is like high volume. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, just imagine for a typical B2B company, they will receive purchase order from their customers. And obviously, the purchase order are in different format. Um, in the market, in the old days, um, there is this uh, software or technology called uh, RPA, Robotic Process Automation. Uh, that we will not be able to uh, fully handle this kind of scenario because you have just too many uh, PO uh, format. Mm -hmm. So what it means here is that we, uh, it, is, uh, it is important to have a platform where it is possible to understand all these different uh, variation of purchase order and then from there extract the important information such as the customer name, the product they are buying, convert it into the customer code or even the SKU that your organization has mm -hmm. to automate this purchase order to sales order process. Mm -hmm. Because if you imagine, right, if your business grow bigger, you will receive lots of PO from your customers. That will mean that you need to hire a lot more team member just to do data entry, mm -hmm. right? Which again is not scalable and it will affect the bottom line for most of the businesses mm -hmm. itself. So with this uh, whole workflow here using the generative AI, we are able to help customers to do more with less to improve the um, uh, operational excellence. Basically to um, straight away email come in with the PO or maybe the PO come in through uh, WhatsApp as well. All these channels come in, AI read the content, extract the relevant information and then push into the uh, sales order mm -hmm. or even in, in your accounting software mm -hmm. itself. So this process in the past maybe need to take like, I don't know, days. Mm -hmm. Now it takes minutes. So human can focus to do something more meaningful mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than data entry. And increase your productivity as exactly, well. Exactly. All right, uh, we don't have much time, but before we end this dis discussion, uh, I was informed that you're opening a new gen generative AI lab in Malaysia. Can you yeah. tell a bit, uh, a bit more on that? Yeah, so uh, we are excited that we launched our generative AI mm -hmm. lab in Malaysia, right? Basically, what we are trying to do is to um, consolidate all the business use cases that we have mm -hmm. done for our customers in one single location where customer can see the real thing that is running rather than a PowerPoint or video that you see somewhere. Let our customers to experience what generative AI can help them and then from there use it as a hub for ideation to create business use cases just like what I described mm -hmm. earlier in order for a tangible outcome implementation for our customers. Mm -hmm. So this whole process, we, the outcome here is obviously to help to work with customers, ideate something that is tangible that we can take into mm -hmm. uh, use case, uh, take into production, take into the actual use to help uh, them to be operational efficient okay. and also to transform their customer experience. All right, amazing. Yeah. That was uh, Kelvin Cock, the founder and CEO of Xtrail. Again, thank you so much for coming in and uh, joining me this morning in the studio. And all of our, this discussion can be found on all of our social media platforms. 